like, give me work. <laughs> How is everybody? Hi. Go ahead. Hi. Oh my gosh. Um, I can't believe it's like October already. I know. Um, just for the pure fact that like normally I have costumes picked out in August. I have no idea this Halloween what's going to happen. I'm like trying to I have so much cardboard to make <laughs> stuff, but I don't know what to make. So uh costume ideas, yeah, please leave leave them in the comments cuz like my son doesn't want to dress up He's not into Aww. it, you know, like it's Getting like to that age. Yeah, apparently. Well, early. <laughs> I always wanted to dress up. I never not dressed up for Halloween. I, think- I have missed the last two and I'm really sad about it. Like I need to adopt someone's kids so I can go back out trick or treating. I mean, you can take mine, but he doesn't he'll headbutt people. But like you can still take him. I could dress him up as a chicken. And we can oh, both go as chickens yeah. and do the pecking oh, order. Oh, yes. Oh, wow. We can peck at everybody. Yes. Yeah. And take their candy. Yes. Grab and go. I, I just headbutt some kid. Donk. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica, Brilliant. what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking uh, some Paps Blue Ribbon Strong. I told Chris to go to the alcohol store and he did. And then he came back with a case of like 12 small cans of black fly. And I was like, I will drink seven of those. Like you need, <laughs> I need something else. Uh, so he brought me beer. Very <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sonia, what are you drinking tonight? Um, Boozy milkshake smoothie. It's a smoothie. Ooh. It's not a milkshake. So I want to be a little healthier. I've just got over like a cold. Um, sickness, so I'm like, I need the thing, and it like it's kind of curdling, so I need to like <laughs> drink it fast. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm getting over a virus too. Um, I'm constantly <laughs> always getting over a virus. Um, and I'm every on... episode, I know and it's so bad. <laughs> we couldn't even record some stuff last night because I was just feeling so down. Um, and I'm on the Tylenol, so I can't really drink, but I have flavored water, Kirkland's brand though. Okay. And it's sparkling black raspberry. For the record, I am also getting over a cold. Right? I just it's really just need to drink tonight. It's just one of it's those been weeks. So rough. Yeah. No, I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and like, this is the only night my daughter isn't here. So, like, if I'm gonna get shit faced, this is the one. Like, I this yeah. is the night. Yeah. Like, I didn't it's have a night. choice. So. Yeah, like if I'm gonna, if I was to get shit face, it'd be probably tonight. Um, just because, like, I can sleep in the next day, sort of, kind of. I don't know. Um, <laughs> depends on Caleb, right? Like, he got up like at five this morning, this morning. So, like, yeah, but maybe I'll sleep in a little bit. I don't know. I can sleep on the couch, whatever. I don't have to get him <laughs> right for school. That's my yeah, point. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Tomorrow's yeah. not a school day, so it's a winning day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay well it is october so this is where we are reviewing random horror movies the theme this year is like i think we said like zombies or yeah zombies, zombies. Like, yeah yeah you know the living dead Woo. Uh, <laughs> and we all picked movies this one was mine and it aged like 2004 um which is the year it came out you know like this you know that kind of tropes but um i remember seeing this movie at fan expo toronto with my dad uh i was probably like 13 14 um in one of the small screening rooms and that movie is dead and breakfast i love it (laughs) (laughs) okay i wasn't sure i know there are some parts that get really gory and obviously it's 2004 so uh, some of the remarks, I was like, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to read, I'm going to read a couple uh, small, the summary and uh, some facts about it. And then we will get into our favorite scene. So the summary was on their way to a wedding, a group of friends take a wrong turn and end up in a small town of Lovelock. There, they check into a bed and breakfast run by a strange Mr. Wise. 
I didn't know that was his name. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> the next morning, the group, along with a mysterious man called the Drifter, is detained by the sheriff regarding some suspicious deaths during questioning one of his friends. Johnny inadvertently unleashes a demonic force that transforms the townspeople into zombies. Uh, the budget for this was about five hundred million. Wait, no, five hundred million. No, five hundred million. Uh, what? <laughs> I mean, like, why is it not like Star Wars? Like, what is happening? Five hundred thousand dollars, and it was shot in California. And that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot about this movie. This is like the smallest, like unknown movie with the most faces you'll recognize. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know him. I know them. I've seen them before. Every single actor, I was like, I know them from something. <laughs> um, I forgot to ask Jessica, who are you from oh, that movie? Fuck, yes. Um, I'm the guitar singer that narrates guy sonia who are you i am a hillbilly part of the band <laughs> yeah! okay uh, wait i want to comment on being a zombie this is the first time i've ever done zombie makeup um i didn't do any work guys <laughs> like i'm so <laughs> tired that all i did was like kind of just rub my eyes with like the mascara i had on and just put like a little bit of brown under my eye it took zero work like i it shouldn't be this easy to look dead oh, to be fair <laughs> that look is coming back like that whole um, like overtired heroin chic makeup with like yeah. the under eye it's coming back baby yeah. so we just need to look tired so it's like right up our alleyway you just gotta wake up and walk out the door okay yeah we're like i'm beautiful it's yeah style, no makeup baby. at all <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, no. just on my eyes um where i just rubbed my mascara in and then yeah. like this so there's no concealer and then i just did a little bit of brown under there like it i'm a little upset like i'm kind of mad a little angry <laughs> <laughs> i am the records lady i love the records <laughs> hey don do you want to plug that book you're using as a prop <laughs> always market it <laughs> market it <laughs> don't sit there my kid was just there i don't trust it by um s vilnov and dm walton if you want to know who those people are <clears throat> it's us <laughs> Oh my god, you guys wrote a book. Yeah, you can yeah. find that on Amazon. I'll link it below. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my last name is Vilnov, guys. It says Kilman everywhere else, but like my real last name. <laughs> my <laughs> real one. My real one. It's the one I didn't know. one is Thompson technically because I still haven't changed it. Because so. you haven't changed it, yeah. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay, so what, like, you guys hadn't seen this before. So I'm curious to what your favorite scenes were. First of all, I loved the whole movie. Okay. okay. The whole thing. It's up there. Because like Killer Clowns from Outer Space is my favorite like spooky movie. And it's up there with it. Um, it's so cheesy and campy. I love it. Um, and my favorite scene uh, is with the the records girl, and she comes out of nowhere with her all her guns and army gear because she needs to like protect the records. I was like, yes, librarian, heroine, you go, girl. Like I was, I don't try that, that in a small town, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I loved her. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm glad because I was worried because okay for our listeners, Sonia doesn't really like like horror movies that much. No, um, not at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was trying to like kind scary of... ones, not funny ones. She's cool with funny ones. Yeah, if it's lame, I love it. But like, well, this has like a lot of gore and stuff. It's not the gore that scares me; it's the jump scares. And like oh, horror okay. movies nowadays, it's all fucking jump scares, okay? Yes, like, yeah. I can't, like, life every day already has my heart, like, ouch. I don't need it for entertainment, <laughs> also. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Cause I remember there was like some parts where I was like, I forgot that it got this gory. Like, I forgot the rating. It's actually, 
it was originally rated NC-17, but then they re-edited it and made it rated R. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm I'm really I'm really I'm really happy to hear that. Okay, because I picked it. I was like, it's a musical. She'll like a musical. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like gore and stuff, like Dr. Giggles. I love Dr. Giggles. Um, just like the old, older ones, because like, you know, Child's Play, Nightmare on Elm Street. Uh, there's very little jumping, like just like, blah. And gore doesn't bother me. Like, I know like that's fucking fake shit. Um, yeah. It's just when all of a sudden I'm watching something. It's the build up. Like, the build-up with the jump scare is what, like, makes it worse, I think. Like, the ring, the scariest part in the ring was when she was in the barn and a fucking cockroach walked over and, like, she screamed, so I screamed. I'm like, oh, it's a bug! You know, I hate bugs, but, like, that's... <laughs> yeah. Why are we screaming? Yeah, no, but... I just, I just remember watching it and the guy, I'm trying to look up his name, uh, that performed, like, half the songs, uh, was it the Zach Selwyn? Mm -hmm. Like he wrote and performed like half the songs in this movie that I'm like, why didn't his music career take off after this? He was the main <laughs> character. Like, yeah. and he switched genres when he died, you know? Like, it's just, it was so like I, I loved that part of the film. Um, uh, but anyways, sorry, John. What was your favorite um, scene? I loved the barn scene. Like when they're at the bar or with like the show, the, the hoedown or whatever. <laughs> the hoedown. The <laughs> they were yeah. at the bar, barn. They had banjos. It was a thing. Okay. They were doing line dancing and stuff. It was great. Anyway, <laughs> I loved it because it was like a fight scene slash dance off and they were killing each other, but like having fun. I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> having fun killing each other. Yeah, I personally love line dancing. I love like, it too. It. If, <laughs> like when it's like when you are learned like taught steps and at like and it's not freestyle or anything. I love it. I need routine. I need like I need to know what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah, like um <clears throat> I don't know if they ever had anything like that in Hamilton cuz I didn't grow up here. But in my city, we had this thing called Celebration of Dance. Um, from, like, grades one to eight. Like, yeah, you, uh, you got, were taught it in school? Yeah, we were taught it. We, uh, all the schools in the area, in, like, in the area, all the schools were, for months, during your gym class and stuff, you were taught various dances to a bunch of songs. There was always certain songs. YMCA was always there. Cotton Eye Joe was always there. And then some songs would change. We had Live in La Vida Loca. We had Who Let the Dogs Out. Uh, you know, whatever. Bad boy. Yeah, well, we'd learn the dance, like dance steps to it. And it was like all like various forms of line dancing because it, like we weren't learning like individual choreography. It was like one choreography yeah. we all do. And then we'd have a field trip. Where all the schools and all the grades would go to the like fairgrounds and they would just blast on the speaker the music and we'd all just do the dance and we'd get a day off school just to do that. Our schools did that, <laughs> but we didn't go elsewhere. They didn't want yeah. inner city kids leaving the school. They didn't want <laughs> no, we were all inner city. There was no like we like I was small town, so it was like you guys yeah. were less stabby, I guess. I don't even um, remember how we learned the dances. I think we did it during gym class. It was gym. Honest. It was gym yeah. class. All of elementary school was gym class. But once you mm -hmm. got to middle school, um, you learned you weren't they didn't want to teach you dancing anymore. Um, yeah. you had to make cheers. Or something like <laughs> I, that. I don't yeah. know what the boys did because once we hit middle school, boys and girls were separate for gym class. Yeah, and so the girls had to like learn cheering. I have no idea. The boys probably got to play dodgeball or some stupid. It's shit. funny because we didn't even have middle school, so I didn't have a female only gym class till grade nine, like high school. Oh wow! Uh, yeah, so like because our all of our schools went up to grade eight. Actually, I had some schools go up to grade six, but we didn't have any schools that didn't start at kindergarten. 
So. Yeah, like, so our school, like, it was within the same school. But, yeah. like, as soon as you hit grade six, we, like, our gym would do a separate thing. And, like, oh. then it would be the boys' <laughs> side, okay. girls' side, and you could not cross over. And, you like, couldn't see have each other. Teams. Yeah, yeah, it was very sexist in <laughs> 1990, okay? I don't, yeah. Oh, my God. That's so fucked up. Yeah. But, well, like, I would understand why for health class, but, like, um, not for, like, sports. Yeah, no. It made no sense for sports. But then, yeah. again, like, I guess um, some of the females were, like, uh, shy. Like, you know, they're I'm sure some of the boys were shy. shy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sure some of the boys are shy too. I, yeah, but I it's like trying to perform the same thing. Yeah, you're right. Like even some of the boys or whatever. So they probably just want to keep it separate from that reason. I, I know, know in high school we had the like we had this and girls had to do gymnastics, boys didn't. I actually dislocated my shoulder doing vault, so that was fun. Um, but boys got to do wrestling and girls didn't, even though there was a wrestling team for girls at our school because I competed in it. So it was like we just weren't taught it in class. Boys were, of course, because they'd be into wrestling. But we had to do like things like beam and ribbon. Oh, my God. I remember that so much. I was like. It was like four months we were doing like gymnastics. I was like, come yeah. on, man. Can we please do something else? Until like cross country came. And then it was like all cross country. But yeah. like, oh, God, our school was like insane for that. Gym teacher made me do the bars. Um, you know, like the parallel bars, the one upper and lower. Yeah. Because um, yeah. I guess because I was like malnourished. So I was super <laughs> tiny. And I was like, I'm terrified of heights. She's like, just do it. It's fine. You'll land on the mats. So I, after class, I chewed on my hands to make them bleed. So then when I went to gym the next day, I was like, my mom doesn't want me doing this anymore. Look at my hands. Uh, my mom didn't know about it. <laughs> so, but I was like, if my, if you, if my, uh, my mom said that she'll come down here if you make me do it again. <laughs> and then I didn't have to do it again. I got to just like walk around the gym. <laughs> That's so smart, though. I was like, like a I really smart kid. I'm not smart anymore. Um, but like I knew that I never had to do schoolwork. They would pass you. So like bare minimum, always, always bare minimum. And um, it was amazing. People would stress over their grades and whatever. I'm like, eh, it doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't matter. When we're grown up, it won't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Me, it was a it was part of my validation kink, which yeah. um if Sigmund Freud was here, he would be like, Oh, that stems from your parents, which it does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, obviously. Oh. But uh yeah, no, I was that kid in your class dressing about grades. Even though my parents didn't care. They were like, Oh, cool. Yeah. Like, we're not reading your report card. Like, I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Open yeah. I have never read my report word. card either. I have all my report cards. <laughs> so, I, do not. I don't even I have do. my kids' report cards. I was like, whatever, guys. Like, if you, if you like I it, do, you but like that's it. for diagnostic reasons. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. After we got diagnosed, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Once the doctor looks at it and can log them, then I don't have to keep records no more. Do you remember um, Mrs. Morris, Domery? Oh my God, yes. She was yeah. such a. She was I used to tell me that my period was only a tablespoon of blood and that was it. And that I was, was like, like the biggest lying. myth forever. I was like, you're lying. I'm telling you right now, that's not true. And she's like, yes, it is. It just looks more. And I'm like, I'm telling you, you're lying. Yeah, maybe <laughs> like every hour, only a teaspoon. Uh, yeah. Maybe like, they're just counting liquid blood and not like the giant fucking clots that can come. Right? It, I was like, you know? I've asked more than that. Like, what are yeah. you talking about? No. Yeah, I never trusted her for any kind of advice. Um, <laughs> to get out of gym class, I used to pretend to eat, chew gum. Like, you know, <laughs> oh, she hated it. And um, she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. And then she's like, show me. And I would pretend to do like a big gulp. I'd be like, uh, and then she's like, get out of here, go to the office. Oh man, I loved, oh, I fucking hated her. But like, 
<laughs> when it came to cross country, she like adored me. She would let me do anything I wanted because uh, I was I was one of the top like runners in the school. So that's cool. Great. Yeah. I used to be really good at sports, guys, not other I sports, <laughs> just the running. I was like, I'm getting out of here. And I'm going to run forever. <laughs> I hated running, but I loved sports. So, like, the running sports, I I would not do. Like, I didn't do cross I wasn't country. fast. I'm not fast. Like, I was You're only just... five foot. So, but, like, just endurance. Like, I could just go forever. And then you got, like, other kids, like, just dying, right? So, you just, just keep going. Just a little, little engine that could. I'm like, I can go. But then I was like, just I could run forever. We got to run all around Hamilton when we were training. Like it was like it was amazing. I was like, I can just be free. And then I did shot put. I kept go like and like I ended up going like on like we had like our 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 county like whatever. I passed that. I got like second place. So I got to move on to like Offsa, which is like Ontario, and I. It was literally, I got to throw a metal ball three times and I got an entire day off school and like free lunch. So this was, I was like, sweet. I just get to sit here all day and write a book. And then they're like, it's your turn. I go throw my three metal balls and then I go <laughs> sit back down for the rest of the day. It was the best. It, I, was I loved cross country, except for they, yeah, they tried to get you to do other shit. And I got these fucking noodle arms, okay? And they're <laughs> like, do it. Field. I was like, the other shit's track and field. Yeah. <laughs> and then there's but like that's the the thing. Thing. Yeah. I couldn't do that either. The one with the poles? Like... Yeah, that was me. I could do that. So it was called high jump. And yeah. like you had to run with the pole and then you had to stick in the ground and like jump over this other pole. I could do that. Yeah. There's no, I was too I awkward. I would run with my stick and then kind of stop to like put my oh, that stick was, yeah, where it long jump. And, and then, then high jump is like where you get on the where you run and then you jump off of the spring thing and then you jump over that pole that one yeah like, throw your back out when you go like that yeah i, I yeah. did that one. couldn't do that and then she's like just do it and i would always land on the pole and that shit hurts my spine man i still like when anything touches my spine i'm like oh no it's like trauma i got PTSD. <laughs> Oh, let's go back to the movie we're supposed to talk about. I know, right? <laughs> no, but gym class trauma okay oh my gosh that's okay. horror movie all in itself that's my favorite so scene is with uh the little unknown actor from Walking Dead. Uh I forgot his name. <laughs> oh my god, I'm terrible with names. Hold on. No, I need to know who you're talking oh, about. Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. The little right. known actor Jeffrey Dean Morgan is in this movie. He plays the sheriff. And my oh, favorite yes. scene You're is like when that he... guy I don't know. I, <laughs> I know it so much. <laughs> but I always forget his name. <laughs> <sighs> but um. anyways, he is uh with the scene where he's like shooting he shoots the doctor in the yeah, woods. In the arm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, Are you a zombie? I don't know. Are you? Well, he wouldn't answer if he was a zombie. Yeah, we would obviously <laughs> say no. Like, it's not like Whoa, zombies. They're like they're cocky zombies. They're not zombies. They're possessed. Like that's. Uh... Yeah. I thought that was a unique take on zombies because yes. yeah. you know possession zombies. It's like they're still dead. Like a lot of them were dead and came back to life once you put a part of them in that possession box. Yeah. Yeah. So magic zombies. I liked it. It was well yeah. done. They weren't like mindless. Like, uh, like the guy Johnny was like, you know, just like, oh, and then you had like the puppet. Oh, I love that part too. The puppet. And he's like, uh. <laughs> yeah, I love the puppet part too. It was amazing. I loved it. Oh, um, so I'm glad that. Okay, good, good. That gives me ideas for other future movies. <laughs> Yeah. Now that I know what's acceptable. <laughs> but yeah, like, so that, yeah. I, I just love like the comedic parts because there's always that question like, uh, you know, like if it's a zombie apocalypse, you're obviously going to shoot first. Exactly. That is going to have those awkward moments where you have to be like, oh, damn, I'm sorry about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Can you get out of like, It has a very like Canadian made feel to it. 
Yes. Like, it's very, like, dry humor. Like, you, like, if you're smart enough to get the jokes, you'll find it funny. You don't need a laugh track. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's what I like about it. Also, it was just, it was good. (laughs) Okay. Well, then I'm curious. What is your least favorite scene? Um, that they don't go into more detail about how he counts the like running over animals. Like you don't see him going around killing animals after. Like it was a really weird like, um, like sure he runs over animals and counts them, but then they're like, oh, so we can pray. But like you don't see him like praying about it later or doing anything <laughs> else about the animals. I feel like it was a wasted scene. Like it was a filler scene. They put us in there just to like talk about it i think it was a stupid story-based plot where they were like trying to be like see he's the nice guy but then he becomes like the bad guy he was well, i like that though, that the nice guy became the bad guy because but really then the, the vegan guys. becomes the hero yeah i'm the vegan i can't kill people <laughs> and then that she was kills all the favorite. nice guy yeah i think this is all like a metaphor for a nice guys yeah yeah usually if you have to be like i'm a nice guy you're not a nice guy like that's not how that works (laughs) yeah exactly so maybe that's what that but yeah no i i get what i get what you're saying it was just kind of like not really connected to the rest of the story yeah yeah and also i didn't like where um there's the part where they're talking about where he dug up the baby like that was one clean Full size baby. Okay. A year later, it's going to be dirty and decomposing. Like, that part bothered me too. <laughs> <laughs> the aesthetics weren't right. Yeah. yeah. It was like, that doesn't make sense to me. Like, it should be grosser. Like, it's. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love that. Uh, and that they had uh, well, uh, David Carradine, who was Mr. Wise, who's in <laughs> a lot of things. As betraying the, an Asian, and I don't think he's actually zero Asianness to it at all. Like, maybe I don't know. He I'm was have to born check. in Hollywood, California, but he died in Thailand. So, um, uh, apparently, like, he's born to a family of actors, yeah. But his family, where who's his parents? Like, we're going on this long thing, <laughs> and I need to know, like. <laughs> Uh, he was, he was the eldest son of legendary character actor John Carradine and his wife are, wait, okay, sorry, I'm gonna read this, and his wife, R. Donnell Abigail, and then in brackets it says McCool. Yeah. Why did you (laughs) say that? I don't know. But do you know he accidentally is asphyxiation? That's how he died. How do you accidentally choke to death? Like, that's... While masturbating. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be amazing. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's his spouse. Children, parents, John Carradine. Does it say... He looks very white. He's white, white, white. (laughs) He's a redhead. Oh no, yeah. that's just somebody who was acting with. I don't. But yeah, I was, like, da- David start. Carradine's in Kill Bill and whatnot. Yeah. So, and he was in the Kung Fu stuff. Like, I just, I just feel like he plays all these like. And I get you can be white and from like an Asian country, um, but, but it's I just, rare. It's very rare, and like the only characters he plays are like Asian descent characters. Um, I just feel I'm sure in his early work he probably played white people, but then he realized the competition was too great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, Don, what is your least favorite scene? <laughs> um, okay, so remember how the drunk dude like passed out and then when he woke up and he got food and he's starting to eat in the kitchen and then they turn on the light and they see the dead dude in the corner? Um, that bothered me. If I'm eating, I'm gonna smell a dead body that's beside me. That that's not gonna make me want to eat. Yeah. Like they but shit it's their fresh. pants. It's <laughs> fresh. You no, shit your pants. 
I would smell it. Listen, I'm very sensitive to smell. And like, I would smell a decay, like a dead body. I would smell the blood, that that nickel smell. I would, no, there's no way. That was not believable to me. But what if you did all the drugs he did the night before? No, no. You can tell when there's a dead body. What if you had COVID three times? No, you can tell there's a dead body. I don't care. If you don't know there's a dead body in the same room as you, there's something wrong with you. Well, no, sometimes you don't can't tell there's a dead body. Like... Okay. Like if the person's not cut up, like if the person like died in their sleep, yeah, okay. But like this person was cut up. No, you're gonna tell there's blood everywhere. It was on his hands. How did you yeah, think it would smell like pennies, right? Right, like, but I like, would. Okay, have you been to a small town diner? They smell like pennies because everything's rusted. <laughs> oh my gosh! Okay, I looked up. David Carradine have any Asian ancestry? Okay, um, oh, Carradine is the leading role because of David's physical characteristics. He doesn't look Asian to me at all. He looks like a white dude with small eyes. Anyway, anyway. Many assumed he was partial Asian descent. However, he wasn't. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's but wearing he did Asian face. Lessons. He's wearing Asian <laughs> face. Uh, like, he's a white guy. Like, Kyle's dad kind of looks like this guy. Like, Well, we need to market him, obviously. Like, I mean, like you know, Kyle's dad can play... Uh, dress up as David Car- Carradine for Halloween. All he has to do is put a wig on. Because <laughs> he's a bald man. But like, it's it's crazy. I don't know. I just feel like that's, that's one of my problematic things. We'll get to there. We'll get there. That's that's my... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have waited, but I didn't. <laughs> he jumped the gun. That's it's okay. Fun. Um... Wait, what was your I told you was eating talking? with the penny smell. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We okay, like, okay. We, we were kind of went on a tangent. I got lost. Like, I guess you could smell pennies. I get, like you could smell blood. Kind of smells like. I just, I think just you can sense it. I don't care. I, that's okay. my opinion. <laughs> I can understand him missing it, except. For the fact that it was all over the floor when he went to go slide right? around. Right. Yeah. And then he the part. Yeah. yeah. Right? Like, no. It didn't make sense to me. How <laughs> dare funny. this movie about demon-possessed zombies not make sense? Right? Well, that's my biggest thing, too, right? <laughs> the part's wrong with the movie just doesn't add up. Like, it's not real life, but we're like, why? <laughs> <laughs> but if it was. <laughs> yeah. I would least- know. Miley's favorite scene was just like, well, okay, for example, for my f- critique of the movie, I wish it had more musicality, like not just the one guy singing, but maybe like, like you a know, dance like, number or something. Well, the da- the zombies dancing, like, uh, is like my favorite part of the movie. Like, w- not my favorite scene, but like one of my favorite, like when all the the zombies start, they're like, what are they doing? Yeah, uh, they appear to be dancing and they're just like singing about how they're going to eat each other, like eat them. Yeah, that, that is amazing to me. And I just wish there was more of that. <laughs> like full on musical, you know, not like just, fourth like, wall cut it. type yeah. dance scenes. Yeah. Uh, but my least favorite scene in general is um, I, I guess I just hate at the end how uh, what's his face? turns and then talks about like he's the bad guy the whole time was it david he's the bad guy the whole time because he's cheating on his beautiful ass girlfriend and being gross and doing all the drugs and just being a terrible boyfriend and then he turns because he didn't communicate that his blood was on the step they could have dealt with that problem but he refused to communicate that and then he just ends up beating up his girlfriend because she kept trusting him uh, once he gets possessed, I just hated that scene because I feel like it could have been avoided. Yeah, communication, right? Yeah, communication <laughs> is key. 
I yeah. hate the miscommunication trope. Like, that just pisses me off. Well, it's just like, and then he turns and he just says all this gross stuff to her about how he was cheating on her. How he, sl- like, the friend they were traveling for his wedding, he slept with her. The cousin. Like, yeah. The cousin. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's so bad. It's like, I wish he had a worse, like, death. death. Yeah. Like, he's the, he was the bad guy in this whole situation. Everything else was accidental. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's the bad dude, for sure. But yeah, so Sonia, problematic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> problematic is. You know where this is going? going? <laughs> yeah, is the guy like um, it's cultural appropriation? It's not. I mean, first of all, the one thing, the zombie thing, not real. Um, it was like something made up by the like company. Um, they have the yeah. same name, the company that did it. Um, and um, but just like just like his like persona of like Asian descent monkey thing. It's the only character he knows how to play. He plays it in everything. Um, Yeah. So just that guy was like my biggest, like I fucking hate this guy. Um, Yeah. But before I wanted to like go on a rant, I had to like super triple check. Like I'm pretty sure he wasn't, but I had to make sure. Yeah. No, like it's, here guy. at and opinionated then... lushes we <laughs> value being uh factual and informed <laughs> yeah i don't like being wrong about something like i can go on a tangent and then be misinformed and then find out later and i'll be like oh shit sorry um but like it's just i don't know it just it just irked me it just and i know white people can be from asia but he wasn't uh, an asian country he wasn't he's from the states he's in a, a north american he's from white hollywood dude. california yeah uh, yeah born. So, born raised yeah. <laughs> Fucker. no i get yeah. that that's a fair fair complaint um that's actually like that that started changing in film shortly like i mean this was 2004 so that's kind of changed in film where Less people are being like racially, you know, uh, other characters, but it's like slowly like in voice acting and video games and stuff. It still occurs even. And it's always that question. It's like, can you voice characters that don't align kind of? Well, as long as you're not doing like an accent, you know, like if you're doing like um, like a, an African country character. um which they're still white people, but if you're forcing, like if you're doing their accents, I feel like that's disgusting. Like it, yeah. I, but the character you're playing is a person of color and you're doing an accent like that or like East Indian, right? Like if you're playing an East Indian character doing East Indian accent and the character themselves is st- like the typical, like darker skin color, that's disgusting. You know? <laughs> that's, yeah. <laughs> that's problematic. Yeah. When you're like kind of almost putting on their, uh, uh, their culture as a mask. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's what the David is doing in his <laughs> shows, his kung fu show. I'm sure at the problem people love him so much. I'm talking so much shit. Um I don't think he's a good actor because he can only play one guy. Like <laughs> just he's he's Ryan Reynolds of the Kung Fu movies. If you <laughs> disagree with anything said here, please let us know in the comments below. We're gonna get canceled. Because we're for hating shit. white people that play Asian <laughs> guys. He's an American treasure, and we're just like, fuck that guy. Fuck <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Don, what's your problematic thing? Um. Okay, so we all agreed that that one dude was a piece of shit, right? And the girlfriend, right? So this is why I had a problem with her. Not because she was cheated on, because obviously, no. But that she would, like, was bitchy towards other females that were near her boyfriend but wouldn't blame the boyfriend like the boyfriend is the one you're in a relationship with and she was so catty i hated that i'm like no you should be like a girl's girl like that that pissed me off like where she was just like bitchy with all the other girls and she a thought she's better girl. than everyone. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to hang out with other girls because they're so mean and rude. She to was me. a pick me girl. She yeah. was the pick me girl. I fucking hate that. Like yeah, yeah. it's it's women that still center men. Yeah. Um 
I kind of like, I used to be like, oh my God, I hate these people. I'm kind of taking a more generational trauma uh, <laughs> approach now. <laughs> Cause like, I'm like back, like literally like two generations ago, we needed to marry men to own property. Like yeah. that's not that long ago. So I feel like this whole uh, pick me ideal and like women that like overemphasize their life as men like i need to get married i need to have a family and that's more important than being with the right person um i just take that as like that's generational trauma because yeah. like <laughs> we've been fucked <laughs> for yeah. so long yeah so um i'm trying to be more i hate i hate those women i hate when my mom is the type of woman that centers men in her life over anything and mm -hmm. i feel like that's you know, it's a terrible, terrible fucking thing. Um, I'm just choosing <laughs> to be like, I understand why. I just hope you can open your mind about it. I mean, she can't because hers got hit in the head with a pipe. But, <laughs> you know, in general. <laughs> I wasn't like a pick me person. I But I was like, the kind of stuff I was, I'm into is like video games, board games, uh, dragons, shit like that. And the only people who were open about that were males. So I was like, oh, girls are boring. Um, so like it wasn't like, but I would, I loved female friends. Like I would die for Dom Marie and stuff growing up, you know, like people tried to pick on her. I was like, you know, that yeah. wasn't happening. Even with my friends, like who are my friends? I was like, no one, no one's picking on Dom Marie. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was mostly like, guys i wanted to be friends with because they were but that's hilarious because like i remember being into that stuff but because i was trying so hard to have girlfriends i would like lie about the stuff i'm into like i learned all the lyrics to spice girls not because i was into spice girls but because they were into spice girls and i was like oh my gosh this is my <laughs> in <laughs> like i'm like six okay so i'm like oh my god i got it now i know all the song i i fucking learned that dance routine i'm ready to go you know um and then, like as i got older and i got more comfortable i found that like girls like a lot of this stuff they just don't feel like they can be that stuff or else guys don't like them yeah because that's the problem yeah feeling. yeah and it's like is that the worst thing if guys don't like you like is it no it's worst? not i mean i'm biased because i am pansexual so like if all the men got defeated off the earth i would be okay um so i understand if you're only attract sexually attracted to men that might seem like a terrible thing but um also, not all men are shitty. It's just a lot of them are. That's why yeah. you can't say not all men because the good men are the minority. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> the good men are saying, be weary of all men. That's, yeah. yeah. Don't, that's, don't that's, risk that's it. Men are not the ones saying, like, it's not all men. Like, no, they're not saying exactly. that. Exactly. They know what their gender's up to. So, yeah. The good men are like, yeah, like carry that taser, <laughs> you know, <Yeah>. like <laughs> carry that pepper spray to a girl. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh. Okay, uh, I guess that's my problematic thing. Um, my problematic thing is kind of the more um, I feel like they kind of touched on it a bit, uh, kind of self aware, but also just that it happened but the racially inappropriate language um especially like during the barn scenes and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff you know where they're like commenting on the slightly off white people <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah like the white passing spanish people like yeah <laughs> And, oh, like, yeah. um, uh, the one uh, woman calls the one guy the Oriental fella. Yes, that was another one. And, <laughs> and I was just like, oh, this language is very 2004. Um, so, yeah, so that if you say that kind of stuff today, well, stop it. <laughs> please don't, don't do that anymore. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah, please. That's yeah. a no, no. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You've please, learned something yeah, today. <laughs> yeah. Please don't be white pretending and then like who is North America pretending you're Asian. 
like when you're not like that that'd be nice too my high school used to ke- get a lot of international students so we got a lot of um people from korea uh Co- like south korea i remember my one friend jenny uh from there she she would always be like i was like where are you from she's like oh the good korea um <laughs> <laughs> yeah she was so funny. she used to get me the best like she would like get me like r- random ramen noodles that i couldn't find anywhere else and she'd be like i heard you like spicy things so i was like thank you so much jenny yeah i'd love to come to your house you know because she lived uh she rent like had a room in like a uh, i don't know what they're called um someone took them in someone offered to take in an international house yeah 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 so she lived in one of those But I remember, especially because of the way I do my eyeliner, because none of that's changed in 20 (laughs) years. um, Some of the men would ask if I was like partly Asian because uh, my eyes tend to be like smaller and longer. And I was, of course, like, no, that'd be cool, though. But no, (laughs) Like, (laughs) like anything but white. Sure. But no. I'm probably inbred. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> this this is all inbreeding. Yeah. <laughs> Fetal alcohol. I'm inbred European, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. I loved the newcomers that came. I went to, in high school. Um, the first time I had pho, um, a Kabonian girls in my school uh, they're like, come on, Whitey. And they took me to a uh, Vietnamese <laughs> restaurant and it had pho. And I was like, how do I order this? And they ordered, they just did it for me. Um, they were super sweet about it <laughs> or patronizing. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but they're just, it was amazing. It was like, and now I love it. Um, I was like, I've never had this before. This is the greatest thing ever. <laughs> I feel like they were probably very like caring about it. Like a lot of oh, yeah. people love to share their culture. Yes. Yeah. They yeah. just don't want that to be appropriated. That's yeah. the difference. I can't I like once I learn about like the the food, I can't go be like, oh, like I I invented this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like you I, show all I your white full, fat, fat yeah. friends take over yeah. the restaurant. Yeah, yeah, like all go be like guys. Like I invented this soup. Um, just so you know, <laughs> you start calling it faux. Yeah, I hate when people do that. Oh <laughs> my god! Like you couldn't oh. even learn how to pronounce it properly. I was like, it's just like it's like saying "fuck you," but without yeah. the rest of the the word. The word. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no i think that's like great like i i know like everyone i've met that has any culture including white people like i know white italians like born and bred you know like that kind of stuff it's like when they have some sort of culture they always want to share that with people around them yeah it's just you know you can't take that culture and be like it's mine now yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't do it. If you feel like that, that's wrong. Don't do it. Yeah. It. it yeah. It has nothing to do with like wearing something, and like you can go to like a uh, a black stylist and get the styles. Um, that's not cultural appropriation. That I went to a person of that ethnicity and culture and got my hair done. That's. But, but if you're a white person, your uh, hair style from them and do it yourself, like that's different. Yeah, but if I went to a white hair stylist, it'd be different. Yeah, if you're a white person and you go and you get some of those protected hairstyles from even a black hairdresser, note your hair might fall out. Yeah, because it's different. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's different. yeah, 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 yeah. So those oh. tight ass braids ain't for you, sis. Yeah, you, so your sorry. your weak ass scalp can't handle <laughs> you it. <can. laughs> Unfortunately, we are born as white people with a lot of issues because, again, inbred. inbred. <laughs> <laughs> All the inbreds. Yeah. <laughs> hey, sisters. Yeah. And like Sunday. another example, since you know September, we're recording in September, and it's the Indigenous Month and yes. the Orange Shirt Days. Um. If you buy any of that stuff from white creators, not indigenous people, 
that cultural appropriation. You buy a dream catcher from Walmart, <gasps> cultural appropriation. If you're not buying anything, like if you're buying anything that's indigenous, not from indigenous people's creators, cultural appropriation. <laughs> just, yeah. just so you know what it is. <laughs> okay, so I have a story and it has like it has to do with Orange Shirt Day, but it's not about culture appropriation. Okay, anyway. So this mother gaslit her kid and I witnessed it and it was the greatest thing ever. So her one kid, her older kid had the orange shirt, but the younger child had this mustard yellow shirt and the kid turns to her and he's like, mom, you didn't get me an orange shirt. I want the orange shirt. She's like, that is orange. That's orange mustard. Gaslit her child. I would have have said the same thing. I'd be like, it's close enough. Like, are you I, buying this? I shirt? laughed. I laughed so hard. I was like, way to gaslight your kid, man. Sometimes you have to lie to your kids, okay? That's the only way you can get through life. Like, the park's closed. Oh, come on. This kid like, can it. tell he, she's lying. Like, come on. <laughs> she's, she's like, no, that's mustard orange. <laughs> Maybe you should know your colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I it was good. It was good times. Anyway, but go back on to the other topic. We're what done with appropriation. <laughs> We're done. We're done with that. We're doing okay. Our, like, okay. We're, We're moving done. on to songs. Uh well um what is your zombie apocalypse fighting song? Was that what it was? Was that yeah. the question? Yeah. Okay. What is yours, Sonya? Dirty Deeds by Joan Jet. Ooh. Yeah, because like you pay her to get the job done, and it is disgusting fighting zombies. I was like, "Bitch, I don't want to do the work. I'll get Joan Jett to do it." And there you go. That's my. <laughs> no, I would get Joan Jett to do anything. Yeah. So again, cuddle it. me at night. I'll be yeah. Nice. <laughs> Kill zombies in the day. Cuddles you at night. That's yeah. the win. Yeah, yeah. the winning. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Don? Uh, Paint It Black by um, Black Sabbath. I think that's Black Sabbath, right? No. Is it Paint It Black? ACDC? No. No, it's not no. ACDC. No. Black Sabbath then. Paint It Black. Rolling Stones. Yes. Okay. See, yes. I know something like that. You're like one of those old people bands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got painted black and then black Sabbath because both black, whatever. I meant yeah, yeah. Rolling Stones. But yes, that would be my zombie song. Is there a reason? No. Just that's, the one I Just, like. that's it. That's the yeah. song. <laughs> I feel like I can really like behead <laughs> zombies to this. You know? Yeah, it's saying? like a mo- it's like a, a vibes kind of song. Yeah. Like you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually asked my son this question because he likes zombies. Um, and I answered it myself. So I'm gonna give my son's answer first. So for those that are listening, he's 13. He's loved zombies since he was six. Uh, and he chose Highway to Hell, ACDC. Yes, that's a good song, too. Yes. Yeah. So yes. that is, you know, one of those songs from those old people bands. Like, he yeah. was like, yeah, I could really. He's like, uh, in a zombie apocalypse, I would actually be driving away from the fucking city. So I would have to have Highway to Hell on, obviously. I'm driving <laughs> on a highway. <laughs> so really? that was his. <laughs> yeah. So that was his, like, response. My choice, um, I chose uh, Pet Cemetery by the Ramones because I was like, I really don't want to live this life again. I just, I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> that's why I chose that song. I was like, if I'm going to live through this, uh, I don't want to, like, once I die, I don't want to live this life again. Yeah. I like also a backup would be um, Zombies from the Cranberries. Oh, yeah. yeah. I almost said that, but I thought it yeah. was too on the nose. I was like, I don't want to. No. Yeah. The zombies. What's in your head? Like the whole thing is like they they took what's in like the people's heads and used it to like try and manipulate. The people. I feel like I would get us eaten because I would just like see them at the window and I'd be like, zombies. <laughs> 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 and it would just be like a vocal 
him like every yeah. time. Like, oh no, I'm so sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. We'd like break out in song and dance and be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> be like, hey, they're doing the line dancing. <laughs> Maybe we just entertain the zombies for that's all they want was a festival. <laughs> Zombie festival. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, zombies. Brains, waves, and vibes. Festival. There you go. <laughs> Brains. <laughs> Brains. <laughs> oh, uh. Plants First Zombie soundtrack. Oh my that God. Play that whole time. No, okay. Plants vs. My son had a Plants vs. Zombies themed like birthday once. So, like. We're big in Plants vs. Zombies. I feel like maybe that's the problem. We need more zombies to garden. To garden? We need more yeah. garden to protect us from the zombies. Is that what you yeah, need more? Yeah, maybe we just all become zombies and start gardening. We're like, hey, we're gonna the eat. zombies don't do the gardening. No, the garden but maybe you. they could, Sonia. <laughs> I know the game. <laughs> I'm making it up in my head to go oh. with the possessed zombies that oh. talk in the movie. Yeah. Like, maybe in a small town, they could just all farm. Because I don't think zombies need to sleep. No, that'd be great. They could yeah. do, like, the, the late shift. Yeah. Wouldn't it just be, like, robots taking our jobs? Like, wouldn't we just <laughs> be a little upset? <laughs> Just, not if we're all getting a living wage anyway and sleeping okay. and sleeping yeah that's the thing they could be our know? night nurses i don't know i don't <laughs> wouldn't want a zombie coming in on me while i'm <laughs> like sleeping just defenseless a... yeah <laughs> uh, night check <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh that'd be, oh that'd be man sad. okay sad well, this ep- uh, do we have anything else to say about this movie? I'm glad you liked it. Like, Don, I wasn't worried about you. I'm more wor- like you can handle like things like when it comes to like horror and stuff. So I didn't know that Sonya's threshold for like gore was okay. So I now I know for next time. Yeah, like if you got your intestines getting ripped out and stuff, that's okay. fine. Cool, cool, that's cool. Because nice. like there's so many bad horror movies, super gory, but terrible. Yeah, I'm okay with terrible. Yeah, it's just the randomness and like, um, like Jurassic Park scares the shit out of me. That's because like the dinosaurs are like a little bit too like aggressive. Um, <laughs> nothing to do with gore. They're loud, right? They're loud, and um, I've had a lot of nightmares, so that's unfortunate. <laughs> Even as an adult, I have like. Dinosaur nightmares. Dinos- and the- it's so stupid. It's always like a T Rex will rip off the ceiling. They don't got arms. Like, is that? They don't got arms. They got them big ass mouths. Like, <laughs> no, they ripped it off with their arms. Their oh. little dino arms, and then they would like eat me. Yeah, like, but these are like sense. scientifically improved T Rexes. Obviously, they're coming back now. It's because they're man made. So we gave them arms. Oh, in like the egg, like while it's forming, they like. Yeah, we're like, oh, this is the DNA for arms. We're like, let's like. And we just put that shit in there, right? Yeah. No. Like that's big like arms. Thing. Make it like a Hydra. <laughs> it has like three heads. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Two Nothing. tails, some wings. Like. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's it's a Rex right? anymore. It's a quad Rex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you seen like uh what is it? Uh, American Dad with Quad Guy? What is his name? Oh no. <laughs> Good shit. This is ruined. Quad it. guy. <laughs> no, it's a guy. And like he rides a motorcycle, but he uses his brain to powers to do it. Oh. It's just one of their side things that they have going on. <laughs> Quad Force? I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> Damn. It. It's, it's going to bug me until we're done. I'm going to be like, oh, I'll tell you a messenger. Perfect. Is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you know in the comments, please uh, post below. Mine Quad. Is it? <laughs> oh, fuck. Is that the guy that's a paraplegic? Who yeah. Yeah. Like- Oh yeah, that's mine quad. Okay, right? there we go. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure it's mine quad. Is it mine quad? It's important, apparently. Mine uh, American Dad, yeah, mine quad is a okay. fictitious adventure drama television series set aside. It stars 
John Q. Mind, an ex army <laughs> officer who has uh, garnered uh, special powers due to his limbs being blown off into his mind. His his limbs were blown into his mind. Into that's his mind. The, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. That's where the powers come from. Yeah. So that's what the T Rexes are going to be like. They're just, <laughs> They're just gonna mind be... powers. <laughs> yeah. Fucking big ass giant head and little torso, I guess. <laughs> just so using their mind powers. It's no. Terrifying. <laughs> terrifying. Terrifying T Rex. I love how our zombie movie went to terrifying T Rexes. So we cannot stay on topic ever. Um, never. <laughs> never. Never ever. <laughs> Uh well I hope you guys are all in, uh enjoying our movie reviews. <laughs> we will continue them throughout the month of October. Uh remember December 2nd save the date that is our 16 hour charity live stream. Follow us on all social medias to keep track of that and to hear what's going on. As well as I'd love to thank our uh VIP Patreon Stephanie Hurst. Uh, we have newer Patreons, but they're not VIP, so they don't get their names shouted out here. <laughs> but still, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> we appreciate you. Uh, make sure to keep track on Thursdays uh, where we release our Books and Booze series because uh, you might find a, a little Stephanie Hurst on there eventually. Yeah. So mm -hmm. keep a keep an ear out for that. Uh, is there anything else I forgot to plug? We have a website. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, go away. Plug. Oh me, opinionatedluscious dot com. What? <laughs> we can play that virtual game that we normally play. Yeah, yeah we, well, on our pre drinks episode on Patreon. Yeah. So again, you can access all our bonus Patreon content uh, content like our pre drink series and our react series uh even at the lowest tier and uh, yeah paninianlushes.com play that virtual game tag us in it and we will share it thank you yes and uh have a good night see you next week with a new movie review do you know which good one night. it is no. uh <laughs> no no uh the uh guide to something yeah that one boy scout's the guide boy scout's guide to the zombie apocalypse there you go. That's next oh, week's right. episode. So there you go. So we'll, we'll see you next time. Bye. Good night. Good night.